Hey guys, in this episode we'll make a dynamic chain using N-Cloth. So uh, let's get started. So let's make a new scene. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is create a low rest chain. And the easiest way to do it is to use a cylinder. And we'll give it an axis division of 8. And then I'm going to extrude it. So uh, I'm going to click extrude, then press W, hold D, and hold V. And middle drag my mouse uh, just anywhere so that it snaps to the middle. And if you hold Control Shift and right click, you can uh, make sure you're in world space and turn on keep spacing. So it looks like this world space, keep spacing is on. And then you can hold uh, uh, X and grab the green arrow and just drag it down like this and then delete the inside so right click faces and delete the inside so we have something like this we're going to scale it down a little bit and now let's make a high risk version of the same thing so we'll make a torus and I'm going to rotate it so you can hold J and grab the blue direction and rotate at 15 degree intervals like that and let's give it a subdivision on the axis of 16 and height, let's do 12. Like that. And then for the section radius, let's just scale it down. Something like that. So 0.35 should be okay. I'm going to select these faces here. Same thing. Hold D and V. Middle drag. Snap there. Uh, oops. I need to extrude first. So let's extrude. And then hold D, V. Extract. Uh, snap there. Hold. Uh, press W. Hold x click and drag down like that so now we have a chain link and i want to add a loop down the middle in here so i'm going to use insert edge loop tool set it to multiple uh, edge loops auto complete on and one and then we can click inside here like this so now we have a single high res edge loop and you can also go into uh, modeling here uh, mesh display and click uh, soften edge this will just soften our normal so it looks nice and clean like that and then I'm going to scale this low res version so that it matches the width like that and also you can see it goes through the middle and that's what we want so I'm going to select both and then I'm going to go into modify and click uh, center pivot and then clear history so shift alt D and then I'm going to grab the up direction, just snap it to the middle here like that. And then freeze and reset transformation. So it's also under modify freeze and reset transformations. Okay, I'm going to hide this one. We don't need it. And I'm just going to call this uh, chain link low. And give it a 1 like that. And now let's duplicate it. So I'm going to duplicate it and move it up or down, it doesn't matter, like this, and then Shift D, make a bunch of links, that's 10, should be good, and I'm going to select every other one, and hold J, grab the Y direction, and just rotate it 90 degrees right there, and then modify freeze, and that's it, okay, these are done. Now we need to set up our end cloth. I'm going to group these like that just so I have a group for them. I'm going to call this end cloth uh, GRP just so I know what it is. And then I'm going to set this to FX. So right here, FX. And we need the end cloth uh, right there. So you can tear off any menu by just clicking those I icons there, uh, those little uh, lines. So now we need to use this guy and create it as a passive collider. Uh, passive collider means that it will interact with end cloth but itself will not react to gravity. And uh, I'm going to place it on top here so I know that's the one. And then these guys here, uh, I'm going to just create end cloth on each one. And after you click create it on one, you can just uh, press G as you go down. So select the next one, press G. This will redo the last thing you did. Like that. Alright, so that's set. Now, if uh, we need to reset our timeline, so I want to set the timeline from zero. Oops. 
to a thousand and then I'm gonna click on the play button here and if you scroll down to playback speed to this window uh, set it to play every frame free and then rewind and hit play it's gonna do this and that's okay we just need to set some options so in here you want to select the end rigid and the end cloth all of them together go to Windows general and open up the attribute spreadsheet this will give you this window and under shape keyable there's some options that we can set so the first thing is thickness and we can see what the thickness does if we hit play and then I'm gonna come in here and put in like 0.1 and you can see the thickness is already being affected so I'm gonna set it to 0.2 I think that's gonna work okay and then we need to set some other options so I'm gonna scroll and I'm gonna find uh, something that I need which is what where is it here it is uh, stretch resistance 200 so basically uh, the top one this is the rigid shape it doesn't have these values because it doesn't react like the regular end cloth it just interacts with end cloth so I'm gonna set compression resistance 200 and bend resistance 200 so I rewind hit play you can see it's getting a little more rigid and now I'm gonna find rigidity and set it to 2 rewind and hit play so if we rewind again it looks pretty good now that's all we really need to do it's gonna work well <clears throat> one other thing we need to do actually is if you go back to the attribute spreadsheet uh, one of the things here is the way the end cloth is being solved where is it oh here it is so our individual links have vertex face set it gives you a more realistic result uh, less collision and stuff so I want to set the rigid shape to the same one and you can do that by just typing in three and the reason this works is because the first value if I type in one it's gonna go through the first value two will be the second value which is vertex edge and I know that three is the vertex face one so that's good rewind now the next thing you need is a script called um, rivet uh, it's a free script you can find it on creative crash uh, or high-end 3d I'm gonna post the link in the description you guys can download and install it it gives you this little icon I put it in my rigging shelf and uh, what it does is it's pretty simple it just makes a an aim constraint between two edges and puts a locator in between them so you, you select two edges click the script and it does that it's really fast and works really well now another way you can do this is uh, instead of using rivet script and then the next thing we're going to do after that is to uh, just to parent the high-res mesh to the locators you can also do a wrap deformer from the lowest to the high-res but it's a little more task ta taxing on your system so I prefer just using the rivet even if it uh, takes a little little more steps so just go through also if you preemptively press F10 this will change uh, your selection to component mode to edge so that anytime you click on an object it'll already go to edge and you can just uh, select the object select the two edges and press G like that and then press uh, F8 to leave that mode so uh, F8 will toggle between component and object mode and F9 is for vertex F10 is for edge F11 is for face and F8 will just bring you back okay so we have that I'm gonna go from the side view here and select the high-res torus here I'm gonna duplicate it and then move it up and hold V now and snap it to this locator and then shift D they're all evenly spaced so this will work bring them all up then select every other one hold J like that uh, next step is just to create a constraint so uh, hold spacebar go to constraints and we need the parent constraint and the default options work just fine so select the locator then select the uh, high-res torus 
or chain link hit apply and then just repeat you can just keep pressing G now and that will just parent constraint okay so now I'm gonna take the nucleus and all the rivet stuff here and just drop it into this group and if we hide it and hit play there's our chain but let's do a little more with it so let's make a a spool so we can spool uh, around so we can spool the chain around it like that let's give it 24 give it some height like that I'm gonna put a lattice on it. Give a couple divisions. You can find lattice under the form. Also, if you go in here, uh, go to modeling, it's under the form uh, lattice. And the, the settings that I use for the lattice are uh, S divisions of four and the FFD right here, all the max to 30. Uh, the max is 30, so just set this to 30 like that. So we can scale this down like that and then scale this and make a spool like that. I'm going to freeze transformations. Uh, hold shift, right click, bevel shape, uh, click on the chamfer. This will give you a chamfer and if you want you can give it uh, three segments which will give you a double bevel so when you press 3 you get a really nice clean sharp bevel okay and if we want we can put a hole in it very easily extrude spacing and then we can uh, snap it to the grid there soften edge clear history and then I'm going to line that up so it's kind of touching the chain there maybe a little bigger like that freeze transformations and then I'm going to go to end cloth and create a passive collider on this Gonna go to frame zero and key rotate X here. And then come back, go to frame 1000, put negative 2000 in here, key selected. There it goes. And I'm gonna open up the graph editor. It's under window, animation, graph editor. Uh, go to select. You can then select the curve option here that way you can select the curve we can adjust this tangent here so that it starts out slow but then starts to spin fast all right and now all we need to do is select uh, the spool and then select this chain link and this chain link is the first one so this one here the passive collider one so I'm selecting first the spool, then that chain link, and then going into constraint and just do a parent constraint like that. And what this will do is when that's when that spool spins, it's gonna take that uh, first link with it as well. You can hide that; you don't need to see it. Hide the grid. some faces in here I forgot about and that's it
and there it is so if you make the chain longer uh, you can actually just make a very long chain and then have it spool all the way around and if you need to make like a, an anchor or something with a spool chain around it it's pretty easy to do it this way instead of trying to do it by hand I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial subscribe and like for more videos and I'll see you guys next time